Mm, nice to have you back from Mexico, Will. You know what is funny? They do have football in Mexico, um, but none of the games are on the right channel. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I was watching the um, the Chiefs Raiders game was broadcast by CBS, but Mexico is on Fox. Oh, weird. Yeah. And then the Amazon Prime game was on like CBS or something weird. It, it just made no sense. But um, that's the cartels for you. That's, that's the cartels for you. The cartels doing just to keep you on your toes. Yes. Uh, welcome to That's Good Broncos. I'm Brandon Perna here with Will Keys. Uh, we were working on the Broncos Texans recap. Finished that late, late last night, so we're doing the recap pod today. Um, we're going to be doing the Patreon Zoom hangout this week as well. So I'll have that information on the That's Good Sports YouTube community tab and in Patreon. What night's best for you, Will? Wednesday or Thursday? Uh, Wednesday. It's well, we're going to do it Wednesday. Yeah, I'll I, be asked there. The, I asked the Discord... Uh, if we should do it last week or sh- if sh- we should wait for Will to get back from Mexico. the We had a resounding, we don't care. <laughs> so I decided to wait for Will. That's better than do it while he's gone. <laughs> yeah. The love of God. yeah. I thought everybody would be like, yeah, let's wait for Will. They're like, we don't give a shit. Yeah, fair enough. So um, I'll remember that, guys. Yep. Please do. Good to have you back, though. Although Will did work from Mexico, um, you know, I Good was a little back. worried, but we we got through the week, and the Broncos did lose, and I was scared that they might lose that game, um, based on probability. You know, winning five in a row when you're a slightly above average football team, and. It happened. They lose to the Texans in a game they could have won. They could have won. Sure. I think that's just – I don't think there's a team in the league outside of maybe the 49ers that the Broncos would play where they don't have a chance to win. And I still think their chances of winning are a coin flip. We just were on a roll of getting tails every single time. Right, right. Ta- <laughs> heads, tails clear. never fails. We get Houston. They get heads. I feel like, yeah, I think f- – San Francisco and Philly, I think, would just demolish us. But most other teams, I think we'd have a, a fighting chance. Yeah. I think every team in the AFC. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's not really any good team. Anymore. Well, I, hard to say that about the Dolphins. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't want to play the Dolphins again. Fair enough. No. No, I, I do not either. Uh, I have a feeling it would go a little better. Yeah. But I wouldn't be confident uh, in a victory. No, that's fair. It, and the Dolphins just, they throttled the, uh, was it the Commanders? Is that who they just beat? Yeah, the Commons. Um, and during, so that game was happening while the Broncos were playing. So when I was live streaming the Broncos game, I had a lot of people like, ooh, the Dolphins are on pace to score 70 against the Commanders. They're on pace to score that. And it, then they did. They scored like 42 or 35. I forget, 38. I don't even know where they 40, ended. 45. 45. Okay. So they got not even – they got a little more than halfway to, to 70, which just goes to show you how much – how hard it is to get to 70 because in most games, when teams get that far out, when they're that – when they have that big of a lead, they really let off the gas. <laughs> For they, whatever reason, in that Broncos game, <laughs> I think the Dolphins weren't trying to do anything crazy. I don't either. Denver was just giving up insane run after insane run. Mike White touchdown to to Robbie Anderson. A lot of things got to break a certain way to hit seventy. <laughs> yeah, uh, they were like just trying to yeah run the ball three yards uh, a pop, and they just couldn't. <laughs> they 50, just couldn't tackle them. Fifty. Yeah. They were Nico Collins in us the whole game. God, dude. Uh, I thought it looked like Stroud was about to break the passing yards record in that game yeah. for a second. He had, what, 170 in the first quarter, and he only finishes with, like, 274. 
Yeah, it was, and it was all it, there, those three like Nico Collins plays or two of those Nico Collins plays even yeah. later. And I think that was, um, was it Fabian Moreau in coverage on, on a lot of those? I think so. I think and so. he'd been playing yeah. well up until that point, but I think we kind of got exposed on what our, one of our needs, I guess you'd say in the secondary. Right. Um, per like, not like, it, and I, I thought he was playing well. McMillan has been playing well, but he got he got twisted around on that touchdown. <laughs> he got juked. Uh, it, that happens from time to time, you know. But like, um, if Kwan Williams maybe was healthy, yeah, uh, maybe start to maybe the the secondary like dang they're really really good versus okay they got exposed a little bit. I trust them to be pretty good most of the time, but uh, Nico torched them. Um, and that was, I mean, that was arguably a, a difference maker in the game. Yeah, I mean, it's never a good sign when the corner is like throwing his hands up before the receiver even catches the ball in the end zone. That's what just I so would do. Oh, God! <laughs> yeah, be, I would just, I would fall over every time, make it look like I tripped. I would just be asking for a flag yeah. every time. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do a yeah. sketch of... And I don't think of many sketches anymore. I am not Tom Grassi, but I want to do a sketch about uh, corners during their bye week at home. And it's just like uh, they're like Jess is grabbing something out of the fridge and I come down and just like slap it out of their hand and do it. Or like somebody's throwing her something to grab and she fumbles it. And then you just go by and do like the, the sword thing that they do. It's the. I like that. Yeah. You know. <laughs> You'd have to play like Riley Moss or Jason Seahorn, but other than that, I think that's a it's got some potential for sure. Mm, yeah, I was gonna go to the Kansas City Chiefs, but I I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna pull back, I'm gonna pull back, bro. <laughs> we're gonna walk it back a little bit. We're, walk gonna, back. we're gonna hit the reset button. Um, yeah. So what would like? Obviously, it's so weird when we get to this point. Okay, Monday after you like after I've live streamed the game, you mm -hmm. and I kind of tag team a script about it. Then I talk about it with Tom. Uh, my, like I don't know what else the fuck to talk about with the Broncos. Like, what is what do people care about? Uh, we're not live, so I can't ask everybody. But what is I guess like what's on your mind about yeah. the Broncos when you're looking forward to the rest of the season? Their playoff chances are not dead. They're sitting at six oh. and six. They're a game or two basically out. Uh, I think they got to go four and one from this point out. And I think the Lions game is the one we're all penciling in as the one they can lose because you look at the schedule, it's the Raiders, it's the Chargers twice, and it's the Patriots. And those are all winnable games. To me, I think they'll maybe they'll beat the Lions and they'll lose to like the Chargers twice and in just horrifying fashion miss the playoffs that way. But yeah. like, what, what, what are your thoughts? What are you feeling? What do you want to I, see? I'm nervous about like one of the Chargers games. And to be honest, um, I can't remember the last time we won in SoFi. It feels like it's been a while. Mm -hmm. So um, that and that's next week. And that's got me a little concerned. I think the thing that I'm looking forward to or just kind of curious about the rest of the way is Russell Wilson and kind of the it's a weird thing to say. But like, is he going to play well enough to keep his job next year? No, I was I was just thinking about that, and I didn't know if I wanted to even ask you that question because, like, I don't want to be a, a Russ Bader right now. But this, I don't think it's Russ Bader. I think it's a fair question. No, I I, th I think it is too. I guess I don't want to be perceived as one. It's about how I'm perceived. <laughs> um, it's uh hundred percent. When the Broncos lose, I really feel like it's they're being limited by Russ. And when they're winning, a big part of the reason they win is Russ, but it's because he's playing within his yeah. limitations. <laughs> no, exactly. I, I feel like a lot of the games they win, you're like, they won a close game because Russ was great at the end. It was a close game also because Russ can't do much but it wasn't a blowout because Russ wasn't throwing the ball away. And somehow yeah. he managed to do all three of those <laughs> on Sunday against the Texans. And it turned into a loss. 
but you do feel like the the offense is just like kind of hamstrung for large yeah. portions of these games. Um, typically the first half, although that wasn't the case against Cleveland. Uh, but you, you just get tired of this like same old script where they can't move the ball at all in the first half. And they get a little something going in the third quarter and they finally kick it into high gear in the fourth where either they win by the skin of their teeth or it's too little too late like it was yeah. against the Texans. It It's just like Russ has to be out of the pocket and he can make the kind of throws that you're like normal quarterbacks shouldn't can't really make those on, on a regular basis. Gets out of the pocket and he can he can hit Sutton anywhere <laughs> in the pocket with time. Still can't fucking see Jerry Judy wide open. No. And I don't have and I never I'd never watch the all 22. Let's be clear. I will never watch the all 22. I'm not going to go back and watch the all 22. The only time I'm going to see the all 22 is if somebody else posts something they saw from the all 22. And even then, I don't you know, they can post whatever they yeah. want. I'm not getting anything out of that. No, You know what bothers me about the all 22 recaps, too? Mm. Is when when they're go when they keep reversing the play and not showing oh, you the yes. follow through of the play like yes. sixty <laughs> fucking times. Just let me see what happens there. Do it once through, maybe yes. even twice, and then you can do your little reverse. Yeah, give me the don't tease it. Yes, and I play think maybe the thinking is let me tease it so they'll watch through the whole clip motherfucker i turn off that shit as soon as i see you go back and forth three times telling me about alignments and formations let me see what happened on the play because pretend i've never seen that play let me see what happened say this is the cool thing watch this left tackle destroy this man here mm -hmm. and then give me whatever your breakdown is of it or why the quarterback didn't see this player over here anyway i i didn't go back and see all 22 but the the play where where Russ missed Jerry dude duty Judy, um, <laughs> it was Jerry Duty yesterday. I, he's he's Jerry Duty. Duty. <laughs> uh, I was I, I watched that a bunch of times, and I tried to like align where I thought Judy would be when Russ was was looking, and when I was making the recap, the the thing I noticed that made me like go oh shit is Russ's eyes were pointed right where it looks like Jerry Judy is. And he's off frame. And with those plays, sometimes Russ gets like eviscerated for not seeing a, a, an open guy. Yeah. But if you look at where Russ is in a play, it's like, okay, this is where you're, you're seeing the, the, his disability as a short man quarterback, because mm -hmm. there's like, there's big linemen in front of him and they're wanting him to throw to a guy that, he probably can't see in certain situations. I've seen that a lot when they're like, oh God, you didn't see this guy here. Yeah, it's three. like, right. It's like that, uh, you remember in Madden when they had like the QB vision cone for a year mm -hmm. and it just like highlighted a part of the field? Yeah. That's what it feels like with Russ too. Yeah. Uh, except to, like Peyton Manning's vision cone would be like 90% of the field. And then you go to Michael Vick and – uh It'd be like, you know, a tenth of the field. <laughs> but Did you see like, Michael Vick talking about that? Uh no. Oh I, he, I saw the tweet, but like I didn't. He was see on the Manning there. cast and they asked him, uh, like they're like, You always played as yourself on on Madden, right? He's yeah. like, No, I actually played as you, Peyton, because you had the wide vision. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, I always wanted to be like a pocket passing quarterback. Like I wanted that skill set. He's like so my my vision was so short. I was like, no, I'm gonna play as Peyton. <laughs> so that's, that's a that's a synchronistic reference, Sarah Will. <clears throat> it's, I was probably like in my loaded in my brain because of that tweet that Possibly. someone made yeah, recently. Yeah. But um, good good observation as well. Um, but yeah, Russ's vision count is just very limited right now. Yeah, and I think I saw somebody say something like. Um, it's it's like we think it's kind of like a confidence thing where he doesn't like necessarily maybe trust himself. And it's more like he's just trying to play the game and not make a mistake. And I think somebody said it's almost yeah. like he's looking at his first read 
and waiting three seconds just so he can go to his check down at the running, <laughs> his, his check down throw. And he's not actually considering what else is going on <laughs> on the field. And I don't know if that's true, but it feels accurate mm -hmm. when you're watching Russ. And I think we'll get back to your question. For the Broncos to win moving forward as they're pushing in the playoffs, it's just like we need two to three more plays from Russ in the passing game through, throughout the course of the game. And that's not a lot to ask for, but I feel I really think two to three more plays – and yeah. I feel a lot better about the offense. And it's not two to three plays in one game. It's those two to three more plays every single week. And we just haven't seen it. Um, it's been better with Sean Payton. But our fear was the a bunch of turnovers from the Broncos defense. Are they going to win? And if the run game can't generate a, <laughs> enough yards, can they win? And they didn't get either of those things against Houston. And they lost. But it was still close. Yeah, it was kind of a miracle that it was still close. Um, yeah. And it's a different game. Like, I, we have talked about how Russ was really bad in the first half and just ineffective. Like, I, I think yeah. another point I want to make is, like, the goal of being a good quarterback is not to not throw interceptions. Interceptions just happen when you're aggressive and you take chances. You don't want to be, like, careless with the football, but, like, Josh Allen's one of the best quarterbacks in the league this yeah. year and you're gonna live with the exceptions picks. yeah you just you know it's just a part of the game um but like i it felt like he was getting better and a little more more locked in like after he got the interception out of the way so it looked like he was on like he just wasn't afraid to to move the ball down the field uh i think after stingley picked him off a couple of times yeah but we should point out he threw a great ball to Sutton in the first quarter that got that, dropped very uncharacteristically. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that's I was like. That's what drives ball. me mad. I was like, Cortland Sutton catches a touchdown in that game that was yeah. 10 <laughs> times harder than that one. And I, I'm glad we haven't talked about those types of plays for a while because during, I don't know, since 2016, every week it's just like, if this receiver doesn't, you know, drop yeah. this pass or if it's not this fumble, it's all the gimme plays. You're like, if we get a couple of those back, it's a different game. But they they took two shots. First two plays were both the Sutton, both deep balls. One, he throws to Sutton in double coverage. The first play, like, oh, God. Yeah, what are you doing there? And then the second one, you're like, oh, God, he, he dropped that. And we just – the offense isn't good enough to not get those plays. And I think you're right. Like, I was watching the 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 Packers Chiefs game, and I think it was Collins worth talking about what uh, one of the things. Like, I think it was Jordan Love. Did it, what he learned last year after playing the Chiefs, and I think it was talking to Aaron Rodgers, and it was just about and maybe some of his struggles early this season, and it's like trying to not be perfect when he's throwing the ball but just getting the ball into spots and trusting your guys are going to make those plays and needing just, I think Russ just needs a little bit more of that. Although at the end of the game, I thought yeah, when he threw yeah. that final pass, I think this goes to Trust one the wrong guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was, you know, he had to scramble and he makes a great scramble to get out of trouble. But I think because it took the time to get out of trouble there, it was just, you know, it was a half a second too late for him to be able to make that throw into the window. Um, and I also think the Texans secondary played one of their better games of the season as well. Yeah, I, I didn't really like – I thought it was a great drive at the end of the game. Yeah, uh, in all until of, the pick, right? Yeah, in terms of like the clock management, I thought it was really, really smart mm -hmm. because I don't want to score and be up to – with a minute left for CJ Stroud. Cause I feel no, like he's been yeah. in that game eight out of 10 <laughs> times, uh, depending on whether his, you know, kicker can hit anything outside of 45 yards. But, um, I liked, I liked the tempo. I liked everything. Maybe aside from using the timeout after the two minute warning. Um, yeah, but I didn't have, I would, I'm happier with an interception at the end of the game than like a bone crushing sack. 
Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. It's just like a stupid throwaway. Like he he put I think the ball were, up there. If it was fourth down, yeah, wouldn't it, even it have you know just been like that sucks. But because we had one more down, and, yeah. and we had one more down because we got that final first clock stopped. 23 seconds left from the eight yard line. You got four tries. Yeah. I think had they kept that timeout after the two minute warning, you've got an option to run on one of those plays. And that keeps the defense just a little bit more honest. And I think when the defense knows you got to throw it all four times, like it's a little bit, and obviously the field. (laughs) And they know you want to go to Sutton too. Yeah. 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 And you don't have, you know, Dulcich still hurt. Right, right. But, they, they just need like a, they do need a tight end. That would really help this offense quite a bit. Tight end. That would definitely help. Um, they need a, a playmaker, I think, uh, on the defensive line somewhere. Another playmaker. Uh, yes. They get like a good, it's like a decent team effort there, but they need a, you know, they need a stud. They need... Nobody's Chris Jones, but they need that type of just disruptor consistently. Yeah, I've been, I've been there's Zach Allen's played well at times, yeah. DJ Jones, but like I want a guy, other teams like, oh, I don't want to fuck with Fletcher Cox today. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, when's the last yeah, like knows where that comes from? Yeah, I don't know. Like, who's the last one who's like that on our team? The last like big man, big man for the Aaron Snyden, maybe Aaron the pot roast. Yeah. Hot roast, yeah, remember yeah. how good he was in the AFC Championship game? Yeah, he was fun. He was a monster. Um, that was, he was he he like won us that game just yeah. about yeah. <laughs> on on defense at least. Just and crushed the pocket. That 2015 season, because like Wolf and Malik uh Jackson were so good on the edge, Sylvester Williams had a nice season as yeah. a tackle there, but I'm gonna, I want to answer the Russell Wilson, yes, Tom Payton thing. After a shout out, oh. Underdog Fantasy will nice. our sponsor today. Um, disclaimer, bam, you've been disclaimed. Use our code Let's Ride when you sign up at Underdog Fantasy. They'll match your first deposit up to a hundred dollars. Uh, I have yet to you want to pick them. I had to reload my funds <laughs> on underdog and let's see here. Did I make one? Ooh, I made one for tonight. Let me show you what I did for tonight. Cause I did it on GPS and you can tell me, Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'll probably won't. I don't know why I'm going to get this one. <laughs> I basically went against the grain okay. and I'm going, uh, Higher on Jake Browning, higher yes. on Jamar Chase. <laughs> and then yep. I went lower on Ingram, lower on Lawrence. Um, I love it. I, <laughs> this is great. Um, this is really a George Costanza kind of situation. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I think we're looking at a career game from Jake Browning, which is probably not saying much, but no. I think it could happen on Monday Night Football. Hey, you know what? I have been the best at, at, at picking backup QB in their, their fantasy stats. Mm-hmm. I hit on Tommy DeVito both times I, I, I guessed with him. I hit on Timmy Boyle, uh, not this week, but the week before. And given their – Coming out on a limb there to say Tim Boyle is going to be bad. Well, no, no. I went higher. I went higher on all those guys. Oh, he did. <laughs> Because their their fantasy point to- total oh, was so, so low, low. Okay. it was like eight or nine points. I'm like, these mother, these guys got to throw a touchdown or you know maybe a hundred whatever the yard. I'm like, I think I like it. Right. And uh, like Tim Boyle, I'm like, he's got Garrett Wilson. He's gonna find him on one or two plays. And I am not a Tim Boyle fan. But uh, you so told me like Jake like Browning him. threw like 40 touchdowns in a single game in uh, high school or some shit. He threw 90 touchdowns the senior season. Mm. Was he in Sac? He's a Sacramento guy. Yeah, he's from Folsom, which is uh, like right outside of Sacramento. Okay, so he's got Jamar Chase. He's got T. Higgins. Mm-hmm. I think he can get 12 points. 
So that's that's what I went with tonight. Uh, I hope this is the one that hits because it, it does feel improbable. Also, um, this to me feels like a game the Jags should play really well, and it makes me think they'll kind of underperform. Because <laughs> every time, I'm like, yeah, Jags are they're they're it. Then they yeah, they the leave Jags, me guessing a little bit. But the Jags are like <clears throat> the most obvious like B plus team in the NFL. Yeah, and you're like you keep waiting for them to break out and be an a team but they they won't go lower than b plus and they won't go higher yeah yeah and i think tom said it this morning it's like we kind of wrote the jags off because the 49ers beat them so bad yeah but after we watched what the 49ers did to the eagles should we give the the jags a little bit of uh slack for that loss i'm like yeah maybe we should i think every team gets one like should be afforded one beat down yeah i think it's it, it just happens yeah. yeah especially against the team like the 49ers like shit yeah and i, I saw <laughs> dude the 49ers are they're good um and they're healthy and that's why and the broncos have stayed pretty healthy sertan i did there is there any more news about his knee i haven't seen anything um they stayed pretty healthy in that game. He left for a little bit, uh, but <laughs> yeah, that's shit. That's been a nice change up too. Uh, what was that thing I was gonna say real quick? Fuck. 49ers, really good. Uh huh. Uh huh. All the playmakers. Oh, the, it, this has nothing to do with the 49ers. I saw one more stat about the Patriots that I thought was hilarious. It's like. Oh, let me. I, I retweeted it. Let me just fucking find it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fewest points allowed since week nine. The Patriots are number one with 46. Niners, 49. Dolphins, 62. Ravens, 66. Colts, 67. The Patriots are 0 and 4. Niners, 4 and 0. Dolphins, 3 and 1. Ravens, 3 and 1. Colts, 4 and 0. Wasn't there that crazy stat that the Patriots have lost like the last three games? Yeah, where they've allowed ten points, ten, 10 or fewer. fewer. Yeah, that's mm. remarkable. Yeah, but like, I don't think I watched a single play from that Chargers Patriots game. No. As, outside of like someone clipped together like the highlights, and it was on Twitter. It's just two field goals. Yeah, did two field goals back to back, like full There's highlights. A- yeah, there's a one play of two Patriots running into each other. That's what I saw. I didn't right. see that. Just a Quentin Johnson drop, I think. But that, that could have been any game. <laughs> yeah. You know what's going to happen is Quint, Quint, yeah. Quentin Johnson's going to have 150 yards against the Broncos. Well, that's why in the, <laughs> I tried to go easy on him in winners and losers. Yeah, um, yeah. Also, yeah. he's like 21. Yeah. <laughs> he's a kid. He, he's a kid. <laughs> Um, and he had, he, he's, it's, it's so stupid when a label gets attached to a, an athlete, whatever that label is about their play. And even when they transcend that, it just sticks with them. Every, everybody's already yeah. decided like that's who they are. And Johnston had a drop in this chargers game, a game where it looked pretty wet out there, but in that game, he and Keenan Allen each had five catches Johnston 42 or 52 yards, Keenan Allen 58 yards. I'm like, maybe the maybe the problem is they're playing a really good defense and it's a they're just the fucking chargers. That's just the way it's gonna be. Yeah, think, that's yeah. such a that's such a good point about like the labels sticking to players. Like Daniel Jones had a great year last year. Not great, but like you know, get like it's better. A great Daniel Jones year. And everybody's still just like making jokes about like fumbling and you know can't hold the ball and stuff like that it's like melvin gordon could have played another 10 years never dropped the ball and still been yeah fumble fingers melvin gordon (laughs) yeah like Like Shaq got better at shooting free throws in his career no one remembers that no yeah what's another one Patrick Mahomes is really good. Yeah, <laughs> Patrick Mahomes go, just has a rocket arm, even though he doesn't throw more than 15 yards anymore. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
All right. So will would Sean Payton move on from Russell Wilson? I think so. Yeah, I think in a heartbeat. Um, Do you watch uh, Penix play at all? Yeah. I, I mean, I've seen more college football this season than normal. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw somebody mock Penix to us on Twitter. Um, I've had people. Not like mo- a, I've had people mock my Penix before. Yeah. <laughs> You're, I saw your micro Penix out there. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's older too, right? Him and Bo Nix are both like 24 years old, 25 yeah. years old. I think they're 25. I, I, I never care about that. No. If they're like, that's such a luxury problem to have. If they're good, it's like, okay, well, now they're, you know, you get them for three years less. So, you're, all right, do you want like Trey Lance at 21 years old or do you want, the guy who's competent at 25 years old. Yeah. I, I think He's a lot of it. Get him. Like, I don't give a shit about the age. A lot of it too, I think has to do with how they play the position. So if, if the quarterback is super athletic and yeah. they're incredibly fast, then I do want him younger because you're going to lean into that. And that goes away uh, sure. in the NFL. Uh, I don't think either of those guys really rely on that as, as their game. Um, <laughs> I, Oh yeah, I watched the whole like second half of the uh, Washington Oregon game, and I was like, <laughs> on some of those runs, Penix was just dropping his shoulder to finish off runs. Yeah, he's a big I'm like, dude. I'm like, I like the way this guy plays football. Um, and some people are like, Bo Nix would be a really good fit for Sean Payton, and I think both of them are reasonable to think where the Broncos are picking could be available. Yeah, and that would be a fun pick. Even like I don't know if, if even if they picked one of those guys, I don't think it's a we cut Russell Wilson right now type of thing. I think That's it's like idea. we got Russ. We're gonna put no pressure on either one of these gentlemen. Let them learn, really learn, and then let them we learn feel, until they're thirty years old. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's the one thing they got going against them. Yeah, um, but it, you know. Watching the Packers and Jordan Love, you're like, it kind of does work. Um, and even Love got like just written off by me yeah, and many. God, it, even. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm guilty for that too, but uh, yeah. it is crazy like how Dude, quick we are to to pull the trigger on these guys. We're just impatient, but like – It wasn't like this always. No. We Everybody's like, okay, this guy's going to suck. Like he's a rookie or it's his first yeah. year starting. It's like, yeah. that's how this goes. He's going to suck. Might be good later. Yeah. There's only one way to find out. And it's to like live through the sucking. And that's why, you know, quarterbacks didn't start right away too. Cause they thought that, you know, if they sat it's a little like, while, they wouldn't be so bad right away. Yeah. You got to get the reps. Yeah. You got to get the reps. I think both are intriguing. Um, and if if the Broncos don't have to make like a, a a move in the draft to get one, then I feel really good about it. Mm-hmm. But there, it's hard because the one thing I I like with Russ, and I think it's developing in like we're a team that can win football games. I don't know how many you can win every year, but also Russ brings in eyeballs too. And for me personally that's beneficial. Like, are people going to give a shit about the Broncos if it's Bo Nix or Penix, who both are good? They're exciting at the college level, but I don't know. They will if they're winning, they're balling. But uh, I, I, I like, don't feel like I know those guys well enough. Like, did you know Russell Wilson well enough before the Seahawks drafted him to say, oh, this guy's a lightning rod? No, I, I all I knew about Russell Wilson was like, the episode I watched when he was talking to John Gruden and Gruden yeah. Grinders, which is a show that should be back, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. And um, he should be able to say and call the, the quarterbacks the things slurs. he would say in an email. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is what people are saying about you, man. <laughs> you play like a, a, a goddamn beep. beep. <laughs> He's just reading off a list. Beep, beep. And also a beep. Your that's mother just, called you soft. Look on you, man. Yeah. 
<clears throat> not my words, man. <laughs> I love. Uh, I was gonna say I love him. I, I don't. I love that show. Yeah, he's fine. I don't know. I, we, we've like gotten. Everybody's just like he's gonna be back in the NFL again. <laughs> There's like, a Mark, report Mark Davis wanted to bring him back. Yeah, <laughs> I would be so happy if that happened. I, I feel like he's definitely done his time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just more fun with him. I'll, like, I'll be honest. He likes football. That guy likes football. He, he, he's one of those people that would legitimately just die if they're, if football ended. Yeah. His heart would just explode. <laughs> yeah. His heart would explode so hard that his brain would explode too. <laughs> it would, his brain would shoot through the top of his visor. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly, I would, I would love to listen to Gruden and Collinsworth call a football game together. Yeah, Grudensworth. Because like, yeah, because like Collinsworth gets a lot of crap, but I've been noticing lately, he he laughs and chuckles so much. Yeah, when like a good play happens, and it's maybe because oh. yeah, he just had the Broncos game and he yeah. was doing that. He was doing it last night. I'm like, the guy just. I like I like Collinsworth. Um, I do too. The, he does like obviously like yeah he he's crazy about Mahomes and that can get overkill at some point, uh, but he's like definitely aware of that as he pointed out last night, yeah. and I think other people are aware of it too. It's one of those things where when you feel like you're, you're the only person who notices something, it drives you crazy, and when you see on Twitter, oh everybody knows that you know yeah. Collinsworth dick rides Mahomes, then you you just like you don't care about anymore. No. And it's, it's also when it, when it just like, you've seen the same, the meme every time. Yeah. It's just very like, he's actually, he's not even, yeah, he's not even doing that thing right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, how many times can I see a gif of like, you know, a banana being sucked into a vacuum hose? (laughs) (laughs) Not enough, but you you know, you're kind of enough. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Maybe never enough. You like Penix over Bo Nix, though? I think Penix just fits like the – I think Peyton wants to get vertical all the time, and he can – that's like the Washington offense. They just – they go deep. Mm. Yeah. They like to I stretch like the field. I think he's – I think – I mean, I think they're both good, but I think he's – I like – Penix seems mentally tough, too. Yeah, he's – well, he's torn his ACL twice, which you could use as a kind of a con, but – it's also a pro yeah, like, in terms of mental toughness because yeah. he 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 would started his career in Indiana, wasn't that great, and then tore his ACL, almost retired from football, came back, and just got better. Like which you can say about Bo Nix too. Like Bo Nix was not a great quarterback at all at Auburn, right? And it's so crazy because I remember watching Bo Nix's first start as a true freshman. It was against Justin Herbert. That's how long ago it was. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. When Justin Herbert was still at Oregon. So uh, Bo Nix was playing against Herbert at Oregon before Bo Nix went he, to Oregon. Yeah, and then literally went to Oregon and wore the number 10 while Herbert <clears throat> is on his second contract, basically, in the NFL, or his signed yeah. second contract. Yeah, that's crazy. College is weird. Times of times. What if – what if Penix gets better every time he tears his ACL? Yeah, you have to consider that. Uh, yeah, I think you do. But anyway, yeah, we'll talk more about that after the season. Obviously. Yeah, plenty of, plenty of time for that. That'll be fun. But the reason we're talking about it is because, you know, a week ago, we're all hyping up all of the fun Russell Wilson red zone stats. And then in a loss, we're like, Oops. there's a couple Oops. throws there that I think a lot of other quarterbacks would be making. Can't do that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you you just watching Russ, you just yearn for someone who's six four in the pocket. Yeah. You can just see or, things. Yeah. Or you you need Marshawn Lynch in your backfield. Like you need a guy yeah. who can take over games, and you'll be all right. But Agreed. That would make things a little easier for sure. Yeah. Anyway, I feel like it, that loss sucked. Don't get me wrong, because yeah. we would have been in the driver's seat. Had we beat Houston, like literally, be, we'd be threatening for the AFC West. Yeah, after the Chiefs lost last night, like we were a game behind KC if we just win. We're seven and five, and they're what? Yeah. 
eight and four. four. Yeah. Oh, but anyway, I've got hope. We got meaningful games, at least for a few more weeks, unless something sure terrible happens. And uh, we'll, see. we'll see. We'll go from there. Will and I will be back together. Hopefully Sunday. Uh, I don't know what time. They, yeah, it's an afternoon game, so we'll be back Sunday. Will or I will be here Wednesday for the midweek pod. Please let's stop in. Broncos. What? Well, uh, I was going to say the the midweek uh, Patreon. Oh, yeah, and Patreon. Wednesday night. I'll put that mm-hmm. info up uh, later tonight, and uh, we will hang out this week. All right, well, good night. Yeah, John Elway played his entire career without an ACL and a dick. Oh, yeah. I hope he never sees this. And good luck.